What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's a nice rainy day and today I was going to put the new R1 concept brake kit on the Ram but it's kind of cold, it's kind of rainy and I don't really feel like being out here for too long. So instead I'm going to put the Blow Shift 3 gauge pillar pod, 3 gauges into the Daytona. So basically I got the same 3 gauges that I have in the Challenger and that's going to be water temp, oil temp and volt gauge. So the reason I'm getting, I'm putting in the voltmeter is because I want to put a sound system in the truck and I want to make sure I got plenty of power going to that kind of stuff and it's not draining my uh, main battery. Uh, oil temperature gauge, temperature, and these two kind of fall within the same parameter, water temp and the oil temperature. So if you know anything about the pre-Eagle Hemis, if they get too hot, they'll drop a valve seat, you'll eat up the motor and that's the end of that. So I always want to keep an eye on my temperatures when it comes to the older Hemi. So that's why I got the oil temperature and the water temperature. And real quick shout out to my boys, Omar 68 Charger on YouTube and Instagram. He did a giveaway and I actually won a print of his 68 Charger and a couple of his stickers. So thank you so much, Omar. Still got to find a place to hang that up along with my 70 Challenger hood here. All right, so let's go over why I chose the Glow Shift over the autometer that's in the Challenger. So the Glow Shift set comes as one complete set minus the flocking tape, the electrical tape, and the thread sealant. That's all my own stuff. Uh, you get the three gauge pillar. Now you can choose this color, the tan, or you can go with the black. Your choice of three gauges. I added the expandable circuits that go underneath the hood and the fuse box. That's how you get your power. And I actually bought the their wiring kit. Now this is going to make it 10 times easier to wire all three gauges. So basically, you have your power, ground, and your signal wires. So as you can see, here's power. It's got three different wires for the three different gauges. And instead of having three power gauges routed underneath your hood, they all go to one, and you only have one wire for all three to get power. So same thing, power, ground, your dimmer, and your constant 12 volt. And then these three over here are your signal wires that go to the individual sensors for the individual gauges. So the first thing I'm gonna do is play musical cars here and move the infinity, the RAM, and move the Challenger out the way so I can bring the RAM inside so I can work on that. So let's get this bad boy out of here. I got the truck in there. I just wanted to point out that it does come with a installation instruction, uh, 03209, 03209 Dodge Ram. It does say Cummins, 24 valve 59 or the 67. So, I mean, the only thing you really need out of here is really how to install this pillar into your truck. Uh, Cause everything else is pretty much for a diesel. It does tell you how to, uh, the wiring schematic. So the red is your 12 volt constant white 12 volt ignition, orange is your headlight switch or the dimmer, and the black is of course the engine ground. And of course it just shows you how to put in the pillar. So nothing too difficult. The rest goes into tapping and drilling your intake manifold for boost, transmission temp, parameter, EGR, fuel pressure, uh, stuff like that. So we didn't get any of those gauges, so this is pretty much useless. I mean, who uses instructions anyway, right? So let's get right into it. So we're gonna get this, actually, we're gonna get that out of there. And then I'm going to install the rest of the gauges in here and then put all this wiring and solder all my wires together, then figure out how to run it through the firewall into the side of the engine bay so we can get power, ground, and all that good stuff. So let's get started. So I got the factory pillar or oh crap handle already out and the new one I want to point this out it has a little hole here because you're gonna put a screw and it comes with it I just need to figure out where I put it and that's how it's gonna mount 
So I'm gonna show you that real quick. All right, so these are the instructions for it. Here's a screw. This is literally gonna go in the factory top screw mounting location. So not too difficult. It is a Torx head, uh, excuse me, it is an Allen key head. So it's gonna be really easy to install. So let's get right into, cause I'm not gonna install this just yet. I'm gonna go into the back of this and start wiring it up. So one thing I love about the glow shift gauges is that they come with a pretty much electrical plug-in that'll plug into the back of the gauge with this much wire and then you just take the end cap off and then you'll solder that to the main wiring harness which is going to be this one right here so that's pretty much what i'm going to do is take this and you just plug it into the back of the gauge might be easier to plug them in and then run the wires through so there you go, it's plugged in. Then you have all the excess wire. Of course, we'll trim what we don't need as always. So basically what I'm gonna do is take the red wire right here, and then take my main wiring harness that's gonna turn into one wire for underneath the hood and solder. these wires together and do the same thing and one thing to notice real quick let me show this is that they're different lengths right so the way we're going to do this is the longest wire will be the top gauge the second longest wire will be the middle gauge and the shortest wire will be that lower gauge and then this will be somewhere around i'm going to say right here and then we can bundle everything up right there, put it away nicely, and run the wire underneath the hood. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for all three of these gauges. So that's gonna take a little time, so I'm gonna put this puppy on time lapse. All right guys, so basically what I just did was I soldered the first few wires, and then I got to thinking that it's really important to point out that you want to always apply the heat shrink that's gonna protect your soldered wires um, before you solder. If not, you're gonna have to cut them again and then re-solder the whole thing. Uh, and it looks just like this. So that's what I did on the first three red or power wires. And here is a close look at the solder, a little focus in, but I just did all three. And then you can see I have the heat shrink right here. And then you just slide this over your soldered wires like so. And you'll heat that up it'll shrink down nice and tight you don't want to heat it up too much because it'll make this brittle and it'll fall apart and do the same thing over here to the other three and basically we're going to do this uh what's it look like one two three four eight twelve fifteen more times soldering all the wires together and then i'm going to go ahead and wrap these up in my electrical tape and then in my flocking tape to protect the wires. That's something I learned when I worked at the dealership. Uh, not everybody does it, but since I did it at the dealership, I've always done it since that point on. So I'm gonna continue to do it. So I'm gonna get back to work. This is gonna be the most tedious part of this entire job. So. So I finished electrical taping all the wires for each individual gauge. As you can see, one, two, and three. Now the big wiring kit that came with it has three extra wires for three signals for the sensors that go to each individual gauge. Now one of my gauges is a voltmeter. So it's, as you can see, it's missing a green wire and that's the signal wire because there's no sensor that's going to go to this it's just pretty much a meter for how much voltage your system is putting out or your battery health and the other two gauges which are temperature gauges have an extra green wire for the signal wire so i put the blue one on gauge number one and then i put the green one on gauge number two so when you come down here you'll see the two signal wires for those sensors you've got the green one and you've got the blue one so now what I'm gonna do is take this 
and put it up in the truck. And then we need to figure out a way to run this uh, to the other side to get it to the engine bay. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. All right, one quick thing I did was I zip tied uh, one and two, and then one, two, and three together just like that so they weren't flopping out, made it a lot easier. Over here, I ended up pulling back this weather stripping right there, and that allowed me to pull this plastic panel completely off. So I was able to feed the wires in through here, down underneath the dash, and there's a grommet. That's right there. I just pulled the grommet out, and I'm gonna feed the wires through there to the other side. And then I'll see what else I need to wrap up an electrical wire once it goes all the way over there. And then we can start wiring the power of the ground and the signals. All right, so we pulled all the wires through. You've got your signal wires here. And then you got your power, ground, your constant, and your dimmer. That's what I'm gonna call the dimmer. So guess what? I need to uh, pull out the instructions again, but they're really straightforward. So for the yellow wire, you're gonna go ahead. Oh, that messed up. Let's go, let's go with the orange one. So what you do is you go to the instructions. It'll tell you right there to remove fuse 32. You look at the back of the fuse panel, find fuse 32, remove it. Then you add the expandable circuit to it. And then you go ahead and put the expandable, expandable circuit where it belongs. And you do that for the power, um, the ground, and the uh, constant, 12 volt constant. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck these up down behind here, and I'm gonna route them this way. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so about, I don't know, an hour and a half has gone by because I wired it according to these instructions right here. And the problem that I was getting was that the 12 volt wasn't a switch source and the gauges were staying completely lit. So I had to pretty much chase down like what was the problem. I knew it was something stupid, something wiring. Uh, so basically like, here's the ignition source. You turn the key, they sweep. And what you want them to do is you want to be able to change the colors. And these are pegged out right now because the sensor isn't hooked up to them. The voltmeter, that's correct. But the water temp, there's no sensor hooked up to it. So it's not going to uh, give you an actual reading. They just peg out because that's what they do. So anyways, so they were staying on like that with the key completely off. And you know, that's not what you want. You want them to be able to come back. So, the other cool thing is that they that orange wire what it does is it allows it to uh, remember the last color that you chose uh, these are the seven color series so I'm just gonna change these colors right here and when you turn the key off and then you come back they'll stay the colors that you chose and then when you turn your headlights on they dim it's a little hard to tell because it's daylight still. But that's what you want them to do. That way they don't bother you as much. And I also kept these little, I don't know, these little flare pieces on. I never put them on, but for the first time I decided to put them on this truck and I kind of like it, so not too bad. But yeah, I wasted like maybe two and a half hours chasing that. Now I'm gonna say like two hours. And what I did was I just, instead of putting the fused amp in the slot that it was telling me to, I just chose an empty one and it fixed it, it works just fine. So if you're gonna do this, instead of doing the red power source with this 15 amp fuse right here, there's an empty slot right here and that's where I put the red one. And then I, this is the ground wire from the same harness and I just routed it underneath here and I put it right there on the battery ground. That's probably the best ground there is on the entire vehicle. These are entirely too big, this one and that one and this one. The bolt's too big for the little grounding wire right there, but this was a perfect size, so it wasn't gonna wall it out or anything like that. So now that I figured that and got that out the way, the next thing I gotta do is, which is not gonna be too difficult, but it's, yeah, there you go. So this is the sensor for the water temp, which is actually the same sensor for the oil temperature gauge. So not so difficult to install. I am gonna need an adapter though. I already know that much, especially for the oil, um, for the oil galley down there. I already know that because it's pretty much the same as the Challenger. 
and I already had to do this once, so now I gotta go play, uh, you know, hide and go seek and find the stuff that I need. So I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for today, which is kind of a bummer because I wasted so much time. And the next thing I gotta do is go to the hardware store to get the adapter for that. Throw it in there, oil temp, water temp, and then we'll be done wiring up these gauges. The cool thing is, this is a 5.7 Hemi block from a truck, so it's a truck motor. And where the sensor is gonna go is actually right, I can't remember, is the top port? I think it's the top port. It can actually go in the front right here as well. On the Challenger, I have mine on the top port out here. I should probably just go and check. But this is where the oil filter goes. And on the Challenger, one of them is an oil pressure and then an oil temperature in the front. So this is exactly the same on the Daytona right there. So all I'm gonna be doing is getting an adapter to fit in here that I can put my sensor to and then I can finish wiring that. That's for the water temp sensor. I can't remember if these have a plug on top or not. I don't think they do. So I need to figure out the water uh, temp sensor port as well. But the oil one's gonna be easy. I just need to go to the hardware store, get the adapter that I need. I think this is a 1 8 NPT and I just gotta figure out what I need for it to go in there. So. We're gonna figure it out and then we're gonna wrap this up. All right, so like two seconds have passed since I told you guys I need to go to the hardware store because I remember I had some extra fittings lying around from when I was doing this for the Challenger. And what I found was these brass fittings that I have right here. And you can see the wiring sensor, the sensor right there. And these fittings are pretty much two reducers. Um, they're gonna go in the block just like this. And this is actually pretty neat because it's a lot easier to show you like this than it is when I crawl up underneath the truck. So now you don't want to just screw this in there like that without any Teflon tape because you're going to have all sorts of leaks. So I need to put Teflon tape on this smaller reducer, on the bigger reducer and the sensor itself before I throw it in the truck and wire it. So that's basically what that looks like. I'm sure I can get it just one piece reducer, but if I don't have to go to the store to get that, I'm not going to. Alrighty guys, so it's actually a couple days later um, and I did go to the hardware store and I found the fittings that I needed to finish installing the gauges into the truck. Well, not the gauges, but the sensors that go to the gauges. And like I told you guys, the only thing I need to do is hook it up to the signal wire and then ground the sensor out and then the gauges will work just fine. So one thing that I remembered is that when I did this on the Challenger, it was like back in February and the car was taken apart. I had replaced the lifters on it. Uh, there was no oil filter on it. And then when I crawled up underneath the truck, it was kind of the same thing where the oil filter is kind of in the way. So I just changed the oil on the truck. So the next time I change the oil is when I'm gonna put these fittings in because there's just more room to put the Allen key to take out the plug that's right above the oil filter. And that way I can put these in and not have to worry about dropping the filter when there's like a fresh filter in there. So I don't know, that's just me. Once I do the oil change, I'll put these fittings in and I'll put the sensors in. And basically, as you can see here on my spare block, this will be for the water sensor and then for the oil temp the filter goes right here we'll take out that oil galley plug right up there and then we'll put in the fitting just like this and call that done that's exactly what it's going to look like so pretty uh, pretty easy pretty simple now i just gotta get the time to do it so as you can see i've got the Challenger back in the garage because there's some things I need to do to this bad boy and then we'll jump back up on that So the next thing for the Daytona is going to be my R1 concepts Brake rotors and pads now. I don't know maybe three or four months ago I said the truck needed brakes pretty bad. They were pretty shot when I painted the brake calipers So now that some time has passed by I think it's time that I finally change out the brake pads and rotors So I'm not gonna get to that today. Uh, I'm just wrapping up uh, the gauge install video from Sunday now. So since we're done with the gauge install for the most part, once I get some time, I'll put those sensors in and then we'll wrap it up. It'll be completely done. I'll put a link to the low shift gauges, that whole kit that I purchased in the in the link in the description down below. So if you want to buy the same thing, I'll put it in the description. As you can see, it's super easy to install. Just takes a little time, a little bit of patience. And I do want to say that when I was having that electrical issue, let me say that the instructions are for a Cummins and not a Hemi. So that might be, I don't know why I was having those electrical issues, but I ended up fixing it. So 
That's gonna wrap up today's video. If you guys like these videos, smash that like button, leave a comment below. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time guys, peace out.